professor uh, at Harvard and MIT, specializing in biotechnology development, including reading and writing and editing of DNA and, and anything that you can do with DNA, ranging from um, information encoding all the way up to um, or organ transplants and ecosystems. Aging affects almost every source of human morbidity and mortality. Maybe, it, maybe it's not the only influencer, but it's a, it, it, is, it influences all kinds of things, um, ranging from COVID-19, where there's a huge age effect, to mm. even falling probability of falling down or the probability of getting up afterwards. That's all age-related. So then you have a choice between longevity and aging reversal. The problem with longevity is it takes decades to prove your point to the FDA, EMA, whatever uh, organizations, um, and to do the experiments. Or even <laughs> ten is uh, twenty is prohibitive. But with aging reversal, you can see, you can see effects um, in weeks, and that and that's and. Uh, that's the goal. So uh, it could. It also a third reason is it has a um, strong um, possibility of being something that we all need. Um, certainly, we all do die of aging uh, if something else doesn't get us first. And uh, and so it could be a big market, which means a, a low cost, meaning it, because the fixed costs of R and D are amortized over um, a large population. So those are the attractions of aging reversal in particular. And what we've done there is two categories of aging reversal. There have been many different methods and pathways shown for animals, um, but we've been uh, employing two categories. One is what we call cell autonomous, meaning that it, it only works in the cell to which you deliver the therapy. Um, and things like telomerase or the transcription factors that um, Shinya Yamanaka got the Nobel Prize for reversing aging all the way back from 80 years to zero. Mm -hmm. uh, you can use that in limited doses to get moderate aging reversal in, in mice. And we just co-authored a paper with David Sinclair's lab in Nature showing that that could be applied uh, in, a, in a, uh, AAV gene therapy delivery scenario. And it worked very well, considering that it only affects the cells you deliver it to. The other, right. I think, is even more exciting and broader in that you deliver it to some cells and they have impact on adjacent cells or even sometimes the entire body. And so uh, that's, we call it cell non-autonomous, spreads from the cell you deliver it to. And we, we tested about 45 such gene therapies, uh, we in this case being Noah, Noah Davidson as a postdoctoral fellow in my lab, and then later um, uh, he and Dan Elver and I co-founded uh, Rejuvenate Bio, uh, a, a startup company, to do the same thing. And we've done it in mice, and we've now done it in dogs. The so dogs is intended to be a veterinary product in and of itself, but also a segue into human clinical trials that we hope will be starting soon. Of those 45 genes, we whittled it down to three, and various combinations of those three seem to handle a very large number of different um, diseases that have little in common other than they're age-related. Um, and these are things like uh, type 2 diabetes, osteoarthritis, um, kidney heart failure, mitral valve disease, and neurodegenerative diseases. So, um, so we're encouraged to think that may be getting at the core of aging, rather than it's some um, symptom where you're just dealing with a very specific symptom of a very specific disease. And so that's where, we, that's where we're headed with it uh, um, right now.